This is an aspect of Tolis that I wish I would have known about when I first started the game, but it didn't occur to me as I hadn't read this supplement, which comes from the Secrets of the Delver's Guild. This is an extra supplement. It's not in the core Tolis book, but you should have got it whether you bought the book, got the uh, Kickstarter backed, bought it through DM's Guild or even Monty Cook's website. There is an extra supplement called Secrets of the Delver's Guild, and it has this really cool entry in it that talks about vertical Tolis, how there's different levels to the city, not just when you look at the big platforms, the Nobles District, Old Town, Midtown, but also even within those same levels. It's really easy when you look at the big map of Tolis to just think of this as one flat city. Sure, you understand there's the Nobles Quarters is higher up than Old Town, is higher up than Midtown, is higher up than the Docks or whatever, but what I love about this entry about Vertical Tolis is it mentions how much there is different in height of some of the streets even on those different levels. This is a great view of the city where you can see this is the, the lighthouse area and the docks kind of area down here. We go up into Midtown, there's Dalengard Castle, which is Old Town, and then that leads you up into the Nobles District, and then woo, the spire shoots up into the sky. That gives you an idea of the different levels. This supplement mentions Broken Leg Row in Midtown, and I want to jump to this to show you because here's the reference. This is the Delver Square area. If you zoom in here, this is Broken Leg Row. The entry about Vertical Tolis talks about this road, this, this street or alleyway that you're looking at here, was so named specifically because it's so steep and there's such a difference in the elevations that people often break their legs going up or down the street. You know, if you don't know about the weather of Tolis, it's very rainy. Uh, there's actually a reference on here about the year calendar and weather if you ever want to see temperature and, and stuff like that on the website, ptol.us. But for Broken Leg Row, you look at this and you just see a flat map. So you're probably not thinking in terms of this is very much like what I would consider modern day San Francisco, right? That you've got streets with houses that are 20 or 30 or 40 degrees elevation difference, even when they're just right next to each other. DMs, GMs, narrators, it's up to you how much you play this into your game. Let's look at a couple more pieces of artwork, and I will hide my face so I don't block any of this beautiful art that Monty Cook and their team have released. This is another view of Tola showing you those different levels. So Midtown, this gives you a little bit more variation in those the heights of those different areas. You've got, again, Dalengard Castle. You can see just how massive the jump is going from Midtown up to Old Town, and then and obviously the Nobles District all the way at the top. This is some of the new artwork that they released after the Kickstarter, and it's just, just gorgeous, gorgeous work they've done here. I'm so glad. You can see here we're somewhere probably in Midtown again, because here's Old Town, and then there's the Nobles District. Thinking in terms of you as the players, looking up from the city below, the farther and closer you go to the bay, then the higher everything looks when you're looking back toward the spire. And this is just, this is very different for any of you that live in very flat areas. This is a very different perspective. And so how this can be played into your character interactions, and then especially thinking about your travel descriptions. Let me show you one more graphic here. This is a beautiful view of, that's Delver's Square. You can see here, there is the actual the staircase that goes down into the Undercity Market which is underneath here. It's really cool. They have these pop-up tents. This isn't ever mentioned in the book, so just giving you some of that extra information where you've got the big, beautiful ghostly minstrel over here, uh, right here, and then you've got all the different shops around there. You think about Raster's weapons and Myrith's oddities and the Bull and Bear Armory. But again, this shows it as a relatively flat expanse, right? This is probably uh, Rivergate, then we've got Old Town, we've got the Nobles and then Nobles Quarters, and then the Spire shoots up into the sky. How you play this is entirely up to you, but what I like to do is just include some of these descriptive pieces to remind the players that they're in a very different level city. So there's no topographical map of Tolis, which is kind of frustrating because it gives us no idea what the, the difference is from the market gate over to Delver Square. There's no real view from B Broken Leg Row here to give us an idea how high up is this. Even the Emerald Hill area, I, I imagine when I first described this, I talked about the characters having to go up a hill through all of this forest area. And so again, I kind of think of Tolis as San Francisco. 
the level that you describe this is up to you when you mix in the weather, especially rainy weather. Those those tall and steep streets are going to be a lot harder to pass. When you deal with snow and ice, obviously, that's going to be a really big issue. I like to describe this when we're transitioning from like Midtown to Old Town to, to the Nobles Quarters and then Rivergate as well. I really like to play up the aspect of how high up they are. Even one time specifically, I had a carriage driver go along this ridge road and I described to my players how high up they truly were. There's several hundred feet in the air. They're looking out this carriage over this drop-off ledge. No modern railings or any protections like that, right? This is a DD and d world. What this really gives you is one more piece to use the greatest D&D &D word of all time, versimilitude. Giving your characters an immersion where maybe they see an elderly shopkeeper trying to pull their cart up a hill, their above average PC strength, maybe they're able to help them, or maybe they laugh and watch them go down the hill, right? There's a beggar that has to lay back just to be flush with you because the street is so steep. There's people slipping and sliding and falling in the rain. Whatever, if they're taking carriages from place to place, talking about feeling the, the elevation as they start to go up and then the driver trying to slow those horses as they're clattering down the cobblestones. All of these pieces just add a little flavor. And again, like I said, I really wish I would have known this when I first started, but it was okay because I started working in these descriptions later on. There's so much to this book that you shouldn't be overwhelmed and think you have to include everything. You don't. That's why I'm making these videos, trying to give you those little snippets. I would absolutely take a moment and check out that Secrets of the Delver's Guild supplement. There's a lot more than just this vertical tollless aspect in it. But this is one of my favorite instances that I read that, and it was just boom, whoa, this is so cool. Think about modern San Francisco, right? Thinking about carriages trying to go up there, people walking up them in the snow and the ice and all the inclement weather and how that can add to your game. Again, even some of the artwork doesn't play up this different level option. So DMs, GMs, narrators, if you want to completely ignore this and just think about the different steeps, that's totally fine. But again, when you start to think about spending all of your time in this urban setting, maybe there's rooftop assassins that are attacking your PCs and they're jumping from roof to roof and they've already got levitation magic or flying magic enabled that allow them to traverse these different levels and heights of roofs, which maybe your players weren't ready for, didn't have prepared for that day. This may or may not be based on a true story from the campaign I've been running since 2017. Maybe I'll share that in another video. Again, I just wanted to tell you about this because a lot of people miss it when you're looking at the map, you don't see it. So if you use this, let me know. If you hate it and you're like, ah, I don't care about the elevation stuff at all, let me know that too. And as always, there's a video a while back where I posted saying, give me ideas for videos that you would like to hear about from the city of Tolis. I've been running a campaign in, in this city since 2017. I've done a lot with it. I love, love this city. Thank you so much for Monty Cook Games who have created this. If you want full DM access to the website you're seeing in the background you have to let me know that you purchased it there's a there's a little guide on the website when you click on contact to see that but otherwise check out that last video tell me some other videos that you'd like to see i'd love to make those i really enjoy doing these and it's just fun to talk about D. &D. so may the dice ever be in your favor